So, Steph, I'm trying to understand the theory of functions of language, and I thought if I could explain it to you, I would understand it better. Okay, let's give it a shot. Cool. So, I was researching the origins of this theory, where it came from, and who were the first people to develop a model to try to understand these functions. We have six functions. But what do all these functions mean? I get poetic and emotive, but I don't know what the rest of them mean. Okay. To try to understand what they mean, we have to understand where they came from. And in 1960, Roman Jakobson suggested this theory, saying that the functions of language come from the different elements of communication. So if we have six functions, we have six elements. And his question was simple enough. It was, what is necessary for communication to happen? For communication to happen, I would say you need a message and a sender and a receiver. Okay, so... In 1934, Carl Biller made a drawing to, to try to represent those necessary elements of communication. Whoa, this looks complicated. If we look at it, though, we can see some of the elements that you just mentioned. Well, there's a sender and a receiver. Okay. I don't know what the S stands for, though. Okay, so this letter stands for message, stands for signal, but we can call it message. But we're still missing something in this drawing. Well, there's objects and states of affairs. I don't know what that means. Let's just call it reality. Reality between quotes, because it doesn't stand for the entire reality, but just some, for some aspect of it. So let's try to make sense of these four elements, though. Uh, let's say this video is the message. We are the senders of this video, and whoever is watching this video are the receivers. But this message, this video message, stands for some aspect of reality. This aspect is the theory of functions of language. Okay. So we have four elements so far. Fourteen years later, though, the American mathematician Shannon proposed a slightly different model. This looks like another complicated diagram. Well, if you look at it, it has some of the same elements that we saw before, even though they might be split into different boxes. In the left part of the drawing, we have a sender still, even though it's split into two boxes. And on the right side, we have a receiver, and they are sending and receiving a message. But we are missing some boxes here. What's the noise source? Okay, so think about when you make a phone call. Uh, when you try to communicate a message, sometimes you get some interference or okay. noise. And this interference and noise imply that there is a channel of communication, right? Mm -hmm. uh, another example is if, this, if the internet is a channel, uh, my strange English accent might be a noise source, for example, right? Okay. Now, there's a reason why Shannon split send and receiver into two boxes. And the, and the reason is that he was, he was considered uh, the encoding and the decoding of the message. So whenever we transmit a message, we encode it into something else. And whoever receives has to decode the message. Does that make sense? Yeah. And encoding and decoding imply a different element. You probably need a code. Exactly. Give him an example of code. Maybe the language. Okay, so the language is a code, a code of symbols and of words that need to be interpreted. If you don't understand the code, you might not understand the message. Got it. Okay, so what happened was, uh, in 1960, Jacobson combined these two models, combined the five elements of Shannon with the three elements proposed by Carl Biller and came up with six elements of communication. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And he did something else. He renamed the reality between quotes, that we call reality between quotes, as context, which makes, which to him made more sense. And he said that each of these six elements or factors determines a different function of language. Okay. okay? So we're going to see many examples of this, but for now let's just correspond the elements to the functions. So the sender corresponds to the emotive function, the receiver to the cognitive the message to the poetic function, the context to the referential, the channel to the phatic with a ph, and the code to the metalingual function. Okay, I think I got it, but can, so, can we see some examples? That's exactly what we're going to do in the next videos.